What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday? No, Tuesday? What are we at here? It must be Wednesday. Okay. Um, uh, I, you know, it was a f fun little slate last night. I, I did really well. I, I kind of 5X'd my buy-ins. It was the first time in a while I've had a good night. I, w I won the secondary $15 tournament. I won the, I finished seventh in the in the 250. I made money on FanDuel. I had a couple top 50 lineups in the 222. Um, so it was a, it was a good night for me overall. And I, and I, I felt good about the process. I, I thought it was going to be a really big night at some point, but you know, I'll take it. We're time to get back on the track. I try to time, time to pull the sheets a little bit and catch up with you. Um, how did you do? And then what do you think about the slate? I lost a little bit last night, as I suggested I would, when I was, we were going over the lineups. Um, I had a, I had one good lineup in the two fifty. I was kind of, uh, didn't quite do as well as you did in that, but made a little money in that one. And overall lost, uh, you know, it was not a pretty, as I was mentioning in the live stream, it wasn't a very uh, enterprising attempt by me, if you want to know the truth. I just stopped, I just stacked those, I used those top pitchers and then I just kind of stacked the rest. And I did comment that your um that your approach of going a little bit different at the pitching was probably gonna was probably the right idea. And and uh, you know, a couple of zigs and a couple of zags, and um, and you would have had a really huge night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, it was uh it, it, that's that's basically what worked for me is I I I had some different lineups. I think in my best lineup I had Jameson with Sandoval. Uh, I mentioned that I was going to play some Jameson against the Dodgers, including that I was going to stack the Dodgers also, but I was going to play some Jameson. And uh, that's one of the lineups that I, that I won the 200, uh, sorry, that's won the, uh, the secondary $15 with was uh, now, 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 now I'm going to pull a road here. Like, man, that lineup would have won the 550, right? I know, I know <laughs> exactly. But you know, um, it wasn't <laughs> something I was willing to do for all the money. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, your secondary lineups you want to, I said exactly what I would do with my higher buy-ins and then I would spread out else, elsewhere. Um, I was really surprised at some of the ownerships last night. Like uh, Judge being 25% owned makes sense, but like when everybody else in the Yankees, and I know they hit late and it all happened late and all that stuff, but nobody else above 10% is kind of bizarre. Um, just usually when you have a player that's that high owned at 6,500, you're just naturally going to see stacks evolve around that player. So it was just like some weird stuff. I was a little surprised by basically all the ownerships last night. And uh, and as I said, I think I won a lot of my bets too. I, I had the no over on the... Uh, I had the under in the Colorado game. I had the over on the uh, KC game. And, uh, you know, it was, it was it was a night where you felt like you got things right. Would like to have even bigger results. But, hey, I'll take a, I'll take a, a 5K night off of a, off of a thousand or whatever it was somewhere around there. Um, and I'm ready to get into it. So let's let's talk about tonight's slate. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just find my, find my screen a second. I'd like yeah. one of those one of those days where I got too many screens. Up. Um, OK, uh, where am I? Zoom this. Share screen. Hey, oh, there we go. All right, so let's go game by game. Um, starting with Detroit and Baltimore. Uh, this is going to be uh, this is a first look. Obviously, I have. It's a weird slate, a little bit. If you, I mean, it's gonna. They're gonna be some weird slates going forward. I think Jordan Lyles is is very much in play here. I don't like playing Jordan Lyles, as you know. I like to pick on him. And I will make that same argument again today. I think you could take both approaches. I wouldn't try on, there's some better stacks, but I don't think I'm going to fully stack Detroit, but I think that they are extremely viable as a potential secondary stack. So that's, that's what I'm probably looking at with this game is yes, I'm interested in Lyles and yes, I am probably going to play some Detroit as a secondary stack. The problem I have is like, I want to play Riley green, Javier Baez, I guess you just throw Miggy in as the third guy because I don't really have a third guy that I'm like, in love with. But I think I, th I think that, 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 you know, again, Lyles gets hit hard. He gives up a lot of damage. You can run on him a little bit. Um, I just don't know. This is not a lineup I like stacking. So I I'm sort of caught in between, but I, I think I'm probably going to end up with about 25% Lyles and I'm probably going to end up about 15% of Detroit mini stacks, but not any full stacks for me. How about you? Uh, just, just to... For full disclosure, again, I don't I never know how many people are watching this for the first time. Like Bobby and I don't talk about the slate in advance, like at all. Um, yeah. and, and it usually provides some good, you know, good spontaneous dis disagreements and good whatever. But every once in a while, like we actually come up with the exact same stuff despite not having um gone over it. And and quite honestly, I, right now, the way my kind of approach to the slate is 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 taking me. I probably would have exactly 20 to 25 percent Lyles, like literally just right. just what you said. Um, uh, and we'll get to why it's going to break down that way as we get to some other options. But I, I do think that he's in play 
for an SP2 position, which is pretty, pretty thin, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think he's just as, just as reasonable as any other bad, bad option. Um, so I like it. Uh, mm -hmm. And as far as values go, exactly what you said. I mean, I have Detroit rated as the top overall quote unquote value on the slate, which to me, what that translates to is it's probably a good option for like two or three man stacks. You know, um, you don't want to roll with the five mans or whatever, but I definitely do like them as far as a two or three man stack. So I, I completely agree with everything that you said. Um, the one thing I would say though, is that this, that this Manning has a ceiling. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. He, he's, he's come around, um, uh, you know, in the last like uh, you know seven eight starts, they've been waiting for him to come around like pretty much for a year and a half. Yeah, he put up a thirty like maybe a couple like four or five starts ago. Then whatever, put up another really good one in his last start. So he has a ceiling, and he's just pitching better. And at fifty seven hundred, I think he's in play regardless of what any of the projections going to say about him. So I'm gonna, I'm probably going to play him. I think that's interesting. I I, I hadn't given much thought to Manning. I actually like the Baltimore side of things. They've been really good against right handed pitching at home this season. Um, I didn't mention much about Baltimore, but I think that they're also very viable. There's very low ownership in this game, but I like the idea of your Manning call. It's 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 one of those games where you're in, you can have interest in both the pitchers and have interest in the uh, in the hitting on both sides. I I personally do like Baltimore a little bit. And I like what you said about Manning having a ceiling. Like I do think that that is true. Um, I think he's a talented kid, and he really looked so awful at the start of the season. He's really coming into his own a little bit. So I like I like that call by you, but I also do think getting some some exposure to Baltimore is probably a good idea. And there's nobody going to be owned for a team that you have Detroit with one of the best three worst bullpens in baseball. Forget what the numbers say; that's the fact of where they're at right now. They're one of the worst bullpens in baseball, and you've got a, a Baltimore team that, depending on the lineup, you might get some really cheap options, or you might have to play the five K guys. But I think Baltimore is going to be low owned either way. So I, I think that I think this whole game has a lot of a lot of interest. Eighty one degrees, a little wind blowing out. Um, nothing like overwhelming, but I think this is a very interesting first game to start off with because I think it's something that I'm probably going to have a lot of exposure to, um, whether it be the Tigers, Orioles, or both, or either pitcher. I, I really think the Manning thing, I've got to look a little further, but I, I do think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and and as we talk, sort of talked about last night, it's not a slate where you feel like, okay, I'm terrified not having this pitcher, XYZ pitcher. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and the guy who was the most popular pitcher last night put up five fantasy points at an expensive price. Uh, it's just baseball. It's what happens. And you're going to have that same thing happen tonight where you're going to have a million percent on Robbie Ray, which we'll get into. But I, I'm not looking at these lineups at, at, at these at these top price guys and going, oh, I could never afford to, to fade this guy. So I, I'm very open to the idea of just skipping, basically ignoring some of these top rated pitchers because I don't think anybody stands out. Uh, as maybe killing me, except for Robbie Ray to, on this slate, personally. Uh, so, which... so, so the bat, so the battle is on now as you go into Pittsburgh the Yankees. So here's the um, here's I want to tell you a schedule. So the Yankees have this game against Pittsburgh, and then they have four games at home against Boston um, before they travel to Toronto for three, and then back to Baltimore. So right now it's a competition for who gets to be the trivia question answer, like who gives up Aaron Judge's sixty second home run. Um, that, that it's 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 you know it's probably going to happen pretty 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 quickly. Yeah. Um, so the question is: Is it going to be Contreras for tonight? Um, is it going to be a reliever, or maybe maybe you get a you know the the the, the, the MLB marketing guys will make it so somebody from the Red Sox uh, gives it up, you know, with the Babe Ruth thing, all that stuff. And then we're looking at Waka, Rich Hill, Pavetta, Bello. These are like the the, the proposed starters for those games. So. I don't know. It could be Contreras. He could give up two tonight. I, I don't know. I, I, um, but that that's certainly uh, the, probably the talk of Yankee Stadium. Uh, I used to think that the pitcher would be like the, la the last thing they'd want is to give up that freaking memorable home run. But I, I don't know. I think they want to serve it up nowadays. I don't know. It's like a it's like, a, like reversed, right? Like Because I, I know what you mean. It used to be like the, the, the bane of your existence was for that pitcher who gave up, you know, the – Right. It was uh, – Hank Aaron, 714th. Seven um, 714th was Bill, Billingham, but the 15th was Al Down. I'm 715th. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But but I'm saying, you know what I mean? Like, but it, but it, became, it becomes like all you're known for. Um, but but it, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. I, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm open to a lot of different options on this slate that I wouldn't ordinarily be open to. Uh, I believe in the talent level with Contreras. I worry about what they're going to do with him, what they're even playing for, all that stuff. 
that we have to worry about a little bit this time of year. He only threw 55 pitches his last outing and he was going along pretty well. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm open. I, look, the Yankees look like a logical stack and Contreras looks like a logical potential pitching option for me. You would uh, now, we shouldn't, we should talk about this. I, I really doubt that Severino is going to get enough work to justify his 9,700 price tag. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, he's projecting to be a play, but I'm not doing that. Um, he, he, if, if it runs perfectly for him, he'll, he'll be a good play, but he has to have it go perfectly. Like if, I mean, if he, he hasn't pitched run, in like a hundred years, I mean, he's I not going to pitch. What like, are they, they going to do? It's been, it, yeah, it's been over, it's been what, two and a half months since he pitched something like that. I, I don't think I want to yeah. mess with that, but which is, again, just speaks to my wanting to spend down a pitcher. And I do have Contreras on the list because I, I mean, we see it every night, man. Like you see that one of the top scoring pitchers is 5% owned at a low cost. And it's just going to happen more and more at this time of year. So Contreras is on my list. At the same time, the Yankees are a completely logical stack that's not going to get a ton of ownership outside of Aaron Judge. And I think that's very viable. So I'm 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 on board with. Uh, again, I hate to, to to be on both sides of everything, but I do feel like that that is really reasonable. And if you wanted to take some, some you know, a, a cheap Castro or Ben Gamble in Yankee Stadium, I think that it's worth taking a shot on those guys as well. So if you if you, if, if you're gonna you know, we just want really low ownership on a really cheap player. There's going to be other better values, but these guys stand out as, as individual plays that, you know, that you're not exactly, it's not just leverage upset because not, not many people are playing Severino, but I, I, I don't know. I, I could see, I could see myself talking myself into Castro as a one-off at second base gamble as a one-off in the outfield at 2,400. Uh, they're just super cheap on DraftKings, And I think that they're very, they're totally viable. So um but yeah, the Yankees rate for me as one of the better stacks. And at the same time, I'm also definitely going to throw a couple Contreras lineups in there. Yeah, for me, I mean, I have I have the the competition for my second favorite stack is being very, very fierce. Um, I have I have a lot of teams that I could go to underneath. You know, obviously the Dodgers are going to be the best play. You know, they're going to be the, you know, let's get to it, right? Whatever. They're going to be the best play. They're going to be the chalkiest. Um, um, but uh, we'll, we'll get to all that. But but I, I have a real battle in my head. Um for for second um and the yankees are certainly part of it um i don't know if i can get to Contreras, but i will say this like hey judge i promise you is, is not taking pitches to the next couple for next the next couple of days I don't he does think. though he still takes so many pitches it's great yeah, i guess just a good hitter i guess it's hard to talk you know yeah but he's, he, i'm telling you he, they're, they're, they're under direct orders to make sure he gets a 60 second home running yankee stadium um so we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see how that we'll see how it works out okay um yeah Imagine having doing it in, in Toronto. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not gonna fly. No, no, no. Anyway, no. They, they might bench him for those three games if he doesn't get if he doesn't if he doesn't get it done here. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah. So Yankees, I like, um, and uh, pretty, and I just want to make sure I'm not gonna play Severino. So. You're not gonna play what? Severino. Yeah, I, 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 I he may end up in one of my things because he has the low ownership, but I, I just in general think it's the wrong thing to do. Um, it's just, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. All right. LA, Texas. This is why I actually, this, this is the kind of thing that makes me want to play a guy like Contreras. Cause I think you will get some ownership on Dunning today. Obviously the matchup is better. This is a guy who hasn't put up. Yeah. I mean, he's had, he's had one game over 20 fantasy points in like three and a half months. And I actually like him as a real pitcher. Um, just fine. But I uh, I would rather play a very unknown Contreras versus who's got upside versus Dunning who really hasn't shown much upside. And I, could it happen? Sure. Do I think it's going to? Probably not. And uh, I, I actually want to see whether what what the roof is gonna what's gonna happen with the roof tonight because I think Texas is extremely viable. And again, part of what's drawing me to them is the ownership and they're too cheap. Uh, Corey Seager forty eight hundred. Simeon's been on fire. He's forty eight hundred. You get you can mix in a, a a Nate Lowe or a Josh Young. Josh Young is being the the cheap option. So I have Texas on the list. I know I'm naming a lot of stacks. I'll rank them at the end. But early look has me uh, has me very open to Texas here, and that's that's my my biggest takeaway from this game. And I think I I, I agree. I have Texas as one of those one of those uh, you know those glut of second teams. Yeah, uh, and I, I forgot to mention Baltimore when I was talking about Manny, but I do like Baltimore as you do as well over there. Mm-hmm. And um, I, as a matter of fact, I don't mind taking taking the Angels here against Dunning. You know, I I, I think that's totally reasonable. And again, you have you have to kind of appreciate, you know, if you haven't been watching these for a while, that how rare it is that I'm going to come up with like seven, eight, nine stacks. You know what I mean? Like I usually am just focused on a couple. And 
you should take that for what it is, you know, that, that this is a day that you can get away with it, you know, um, and just go with the low owned, <laughs> most low owned of all those, I guess, and take a shot at it. Um, yeah, I don't want to play Dunning. I, mean, I have him rated okay, but like I said, if he's going to be the the, the, the the cheapo that gets ownership, I, I to be ter- perfectly honest, I'd rather play Manning. Um, and I'd, and not that I'd rather play Lyles, but I could certainly play Lyles at lower ownership mm-hmm. than, than, than Dunning, you know? Um, I, I wouldn't expect Dunning to get that many more fantasy points than Lyles, if you want to know the truth. Right. Um, so I... Uh, uh, I'm probably going to be off of the Dunning side. So again, both sides of the plate, I'm 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 down with, and uh, probably going to fade Dunning. Yeah, I get it. I I I'm a little less interested in the. I don't want to stack against Dunning either. Um, so I I'm I'm I am much more on the Texas side of it. But I think we're pretty much you know so far we're pretty much in agreement with most of our takes on this stuff. Um, the next game we have is. Cleveland and the White Sox. Uh, why don't you start off this one? Because I actually had Casey Minnesota, but we'll get into that one in a minute. Yeah, well, I can make it quick. Uh, I Because both these guys are just like way too expensive for me to get to. Um, I'm not going to be playing either of them. And the, the the hitters are, like I said, the hitting is just, just good enough to keep me off the pitching. And the pitching from both sides is just good enough to keep me off of the hitting. Um, so while, while it's, it's kind of weird to say, because Lynn does certainly have always has some upside. And McKenzie always has upside. The Indians with Ramirez always have upside. And the White Sox, if they get going, could always have upside. Lynn, you know, is, uh, excuse me, McKenzie, especially against a, a a team that we'd like to target righties against. You know, you have to think that as upside. But then the White Sox as hitters, you know, they can hit. So I'm I'm probably like fading the game, but, you know, uh, uh, seeding the fact that that any of those four possibilities can go off. Um, I'm actually, I'm not as convinced that like the White Sox hitting is such a is such a great idea, right. and I can make a case for the Indians. I mean, I can make a case for the uh, for both pitchers, but I just think the price is just going to keep me off of them. Yeah, so I think that's what's going to happen for everybody, which is why these will be the guys I prioritize at the top. Okay. Um, Lance Lynn has been absolutely terrific. Um, he's he's basically been you know one of the better DFS players. I mean, he's just really consistent. He hasn't had his lowest game in his last seven starts is eighteen fantasy points. He's put up some. 24 30 39 um he put up 22 against this cleveland team and that might be good enough to win tonight because of the because of the ownership i'm gonna try to 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 force myself into mckenzie and lynn both um i like mckenzie better actually uh just to be honest but i can't deny that when lance lynn has his stuff back and he's keeping the ball on the ground he's just there's just very little risk with him with some serious upside so i'm i'm not gonna fall victim to what everyone else is going to which is the sticker shock of their prices so I, I I will be be have be overweight on both of these pitchers tonight, no matter what. Um, just because I don't, I don't see that Blake Snell against the Cardinals or uh, Robbie Ray against anyone is necessarily that much more of a sure thing than either of these guys are, and I think they have similar type of upside. So I'm very interested in playing them at, at single digit ownership. Um, all right, the next game we have is the uh, the KC Minnesota game, right? Yep. Um. Look, the same argument you made for, I think Daniel Lynch should be in that conversation the same. I mean, he's going to be more popular, but I think that if you like, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to play a Daniel Lynch slash Matt Manning lineup at the same time, I am not going to ignore the prices and the fact that Lynch, that Lynch has a wide range of outcomes. I will absolutely have some Minnesota Miranda is my favorite play from this team. Um, but I, 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 Mostly it's, it's, it's a Miranda Sanchez are, are my favorites. I don't know if I want a full stack. You might get Palacios in there at a 2k Matt Wal- Wellner might be in there at 2200. I, I don't know if I need to do the full stack, but I'm open to it. And I, uh, I, I, again, so it's, it's, it's Lynch and it's uh and, and yeah. And then on the other side, like, I mean, you still have really cheap bats for, for some of these KC guys. And again, in KC today, it's, <clears throat> It's not the same hitting weather it has been. That's the only thing I'm having an issue with is you've got the 14 mile an hour winds blowing in from left. So I I, I think my my overall story might might maybe it should be the lefties. I, I didn't see the 14 miles an hour when I first looked. Maybe I will stay away from this game more than I thought. That's a little bit too much to try. You just have to do a lot to hit a home run out when it's blowing 14 miles in against you. So I'm 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 a little less interested in this game now that I look at the weather than I than I initially was, but. Initially, I had a lot of interest. I, I think I think Daniel Lynch becomes a stronger play facing a bunch of righties with the wind blowing in. Um, 
So I, I like Lynch, I guess, is, is my is my current stance because of the weather. Yeah, my favorite, my two favorite plays that were not named Robbie Ray on the slate were, were, were Lyles and Lynch, um, actually. Um, so I, I'm joining you on this. And 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 the, 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 the Manning play for me was just something I literally just added projections who cares so um i think i think that some combination of those three pitchers uh makes sense with with um with 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 expensive stacks um and you know obviously you you, you know you need robbie ray to not put up 40 <laughs> to, right. to make that work um but you know that that happens you know, he doesn't always get 40 and doesn't right. always get he sometimes gets six you know what i mean like it's, right. it's uh although i haven't seen it in a while yeah. um but uh but yeah, I mean, you know, you want to get access to Dodgers, you want to get access to, you know, to the more expensive Yankees, you want to get access to some of these teams. I think that, you know, you if you play Lyles, you play Lynch and hope they each get 15 or something like that. Um, and then you can spend a million dollars on the rest of your team. Um, and I think it's very, very logical, very reasonable. And the fact that you're telling me that that the wind is is with our in our favor as well, that's kind of like the cherry on the uh Yep. cherry on the top i guess so I, I i definitely agree with that i like lynch quite a bit um and uh i'm not quite getting any of the hitting to, except to say that minnesota is one of those again it's one of those teams that's in the mix so minnesota on the other side of that but i, I definitely like lynch as a cheap sp team yeah and, and 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 because i'm looking at for again it's just hard for me when it's blowing directly in from left to take righties because you want power obviously upside in general and Miranda and all and Sanchez and all these guys, not to say they can't hit a home run the other way or something. It's just much, much less likely. Obviously they're not Aaron judge who just hits them everywhere and he hits them 500 feet to right field. I don't know how he does that, but, uh, but I, I think that there is an argument a little bit to be made for the lefties, uh, mostly Melendez and Pascantino for, for KC against over um, the run total feels a little, a little low for KC today. So just throwing that out there. Yeah. All right, uh, Colorado and uh, look, you know, I, I felt like we had a really good handle on this game yesterday. You know, I, I really like what we did in terms of I played a little bit of of, of a couple guys who actually hit home runs, and then I, I just sort of didn't touch anything else. Mostly, I was not a priority for me to get to anything from this game, and it will not be a priority for me to get to anything from this game as well. I will throw out Logan Webb as a re really reasonable pitching option. I actually think this is the kind of slate where you could do it. But again, I have a bunch of these guys who I'm just sort of mixing in. Um, and I and, and I I don't feel quite strong enough with Marquis, but I will mention that he's had a great history against the Giants overall for his career, not necessarily this year. Uh, but I, I mean, it's just one of those sites where I'm willing to get a little different with pitcher. So open to both of these guys like Webb better. And uh, mostly it's just an ownership play. Not not especially interested in the hitting in this game, personally. Uh, I have no problem using anybody as fillers. The only thing that's interesting to me is every time you get a Coors game that gets unowned, kind of hard not to have some interest. Also, there's some serious weather concerns in this game. Um, so I, I would need to full go ahead. But as of right now, I, I think that, I mean, the Colorado does a really good job playing when even it looks like they won't. But I, I, I just can't find myself all that interested. I mean, it was what was it 90 yesterday in Colorado and now it's 57. I mean, this weather, these weather changes are freaking crazy right now. So I'm, I'm mostly in the stay away side of this game, except for maybe using some value uh, as pieces from the giants. Uh, but mostly I actually like the pitching better than I do anything else. And that's going to probably go away because of the weather. Yeah. To, to steal a tagline from the rum pure guys, I'm like, Logan Webb, like hurt my feelings. You know, I, I can't play him. Um, uh, that one time where I really needed him to even put up like a 20% range of outcomes score and he couldn't get out of the fourth inning against the worst team in baseball. So uh, he's off my, he's off my list for like a little while, um, especially in Colorado. So someone else can play that. And I just don't even have San Francisco rated all that high. I have them just like a whole glut of teams rated second, and they're still going to get a pretty decent amount of ownership being in Colorado. So I don't probably, think so. what's that? That's the only thing that's throwing me off about this game. I don't. I don't think anybody's playing either side of this game at all. Well, and then if you get their legit weather issues, I can't see any reason to play it. If you want to know the truth, um, right, right, right. Go ahead. I mean, if 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 like if they were like a, like you said, like we talk about, if they were like a must-have stack, and you and, and there was weather concerns, you might take a shot. You know that that might get low, you know low ownership, and they play. But I don't even really, I don't even really like San Francisco all that much. I mean, I think they're fine. Um, and I'm probably in transparent, true transparency. I'm probably going to get to some of them at the end of the day. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, VR at 2,500, you know, they're just yeah. so, 
it's weird because that, that, that's what that's what's really frustrating this year is we are the best value is almost always in Colorado for the road team because they haven't they just decided not to change the pricing for the hitters um, yeah. all season and and it does make this makes this the, the fact that this game will be unowned is something I might just have to it's like one of those things I'll probably fade for the most part but I probably st- like come up with just one combo stack of both sides in a couple lineups because if you're going to have less than 6% ownership on every player from Colorado, uh, even with weather concerns that in a game that probably plays, I just, I've, I've been through this story so many times. It always seems to hit when that happens. Like I swear it just, we, we, it, there's no rhyme or reason, but when it's, when it's not supposed to happen and the run totals are like two runs less than they could have been, it just feels like it always happens in those spots for me. All right. You what like, are we, uh, you, you like anything in this uh, in this Snell game? Do you like Snell? Do you like the Carters? Do you like the Padres? I really didn't get too much of anything. Look, like Snell is a you know, very talented guy who is very frustrating to roster for DFS because you really, I mean, talk about a wide range of outcomes. I mean, it is all over the map with him. Like he could have a perfect game. I can, I can see the thing right now, perfect through six with 11 strikeouts, but he's also thrown 110 pitches by then. Um I, I am basically going to my, – my current plan is to fade Snell. Um, if it was a smaller slate, I would say that we could get creative and play the St. Louis Bats. But I don't think I'm, I'm going to need to do that because there's just enough enough low ownership elsewhere that I don't need to do it. But if you want a really weird stack, I think that stacking against Snell is not the worst idea here. Um, uh, you know, all, ever, all being said, I, I'm basically off this game. I actually, for what it's worth, think Mikolas is basically he hasn't been as good lately but he's he's basically a similar ish uh in terms of what where I expect him to be I, I, all the projections have them about five points apart I would bet I would bet Mikolas and uh and Snell are, are close by the end of the day in terms of what they produce but I I'm not really interested in this game uh from a hitting perspective all right well we, te- we tease this for a while and you know may as well just State the truth of the matter is that, is that Robbie Ray is is the best play on the slate, you know, on on uh, in cash. Um, he's you know projects better than everybody else, and he's cheaper than some of the people in on the slate. He, and the reason for that, he has a lot of strikeout upside. He has a good matchup, and um, you know, not not a hell of a lot of competition. Uh, if you want to know the truth, so uh, he's going to rate out to be the best play, and he's going to rate out to be the highest owned by quite a quite a you know quite a big margin. And, you know, as, as we saw, you know, it's, it's just, I, I know that that pitching is more projectable than hitting. Right. But that doesn't mean that it's a hundred percent, you know, like oh. you, had, you had Lewis Castillo on a hundred game slate. that was like 70% owned last night. And he was actually just cruising along through like two innings. Right. Like, uh, okay. More Chaga. Listen, Morton sort of got lucky, not lucky, but. Oh but yeah. He, I hear you. But, but he, he got there. And okay, so chalk number one, you know, you got there. He, he loaded the bases a couple of times. He wasn't exactly his best, but that other team struck out just so much that his strikeouts got him there. Yep. And then um, what's his name? And then Castillo's off to the races. And then just you know one or two bad innings and seventy percent ownership just poofs the world. You know, it's it's right. uh it's not that easy. Just to, just because a pitcher is the best projected pitcher, it maybe he's worth. 30%, 40%, maybe, but, but he, the big buy is what's he going to be 70% owned Robbie Ray. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's something. And, 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 and remember that, that it's one thing to have, you know, uh, Jacob DeGrom 70% owned, right. Right. But, but to have a guy with the range of outcomes that Robbie Ray at least is known for, at least was known for, um, it, it, it's, it, he still does have games or he does have a profile that he can get a little wild and he is on the road. And, you know, who's to say that he's, like, definitely get there? Like, like how often does he outscore, I don't know, Tristan McKenzie? Probably more often than not, but not, you know, four to one, which is what's going to be the ownership. Oh, it would. might be like, it literally you know, might be like 10 to one. Maybe seven to one. You know, if one's 70%, yeah. the other's 10%. Yeah. I mean, is he really going to outscore him seven? You know, this is not exactly the math you want to use, but it's, it's a good way to think about it. That if you, is he really going to outscore him seven times to one? I mean, right. I doubt it, you know, and it's not, and then you can't use the argument. Well, what is more upside? No, no, Tristan McKenzie just, just as much upside as Robbie Ray. You know what I mean? Right. He doesn't get it as often as Robbie Ray, but, but he will get it probably more than one seventh of the time Robbie Ray does. So it's, it's, it's just kind of, you want the truth. It's unless you want to get really, really different with like hitting and pitching. I think Robbie Ray is probably a pretty poor tournament play tonight. Um, 
uh, even though he's the best play. And, and, and I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And that's pretty much the best I can do. Yeah. I think, I think that what you're saying makes perfect sense. Um, it is an Oakland lineup for what it's worth that it, it's really hard to ignore Robbie Ray here. Yeah. But well, that's I why we're talking that, about him. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the strategy is probably something I'd do. If I had to play one big buy in lineup, maybe he would be in it with two pitcher on a two pitcher site. But if I'm playing and I'm scripting and I'm playing, you know, 20 or 30 in the other ones, he might be in like one, you know what I mean? Of the lottery stuff. They're just, I just don't feel like you need to, if you're embracing a high variance pitcher at this price, at this ownership, I just think it's the wrong thing to do. Um, and I, and I'll live, I'll live and die by that, but I will throw Robbie Ray into, you know, maybe the single entry or the two fifty or something like that, or maybe the five fifty five today, but I don't think I necessarily want to have a ton of exposure to him, even though he is clearly on paper, the best play on the slate. Um, I, I also think that there's a, an interesting argument to be made for guys like Chad Pinder at 2,200, Seth Brown, even in a lefty lefty, if he's still in the top five of the lineup, Sean Murphy, Langoliers. I think there's actually something you could do against Robbie Ray here. And it's just that kind of slate where I feel like it might be worth taking a shot. It's only 67 degrees in Oakland, but the wind is blowing out pretty nicely to right center field. And uh, I'll take my shots there. The real thing I want to do here and, and sort of wonder about is where is all this ownership going? Because to me, this is a spot where it would be, oh, obviously we stack Seattle here, especially with Jesse, with Julio Rodriguez back with um, Winker at 2,900, Hanager's 5,300, he's 2,300 on FanDuel. Um, I, I think Seattle is an awesome stack and they are just not getting the love I think they deserve. So I will put Seattle as one of my teams and, my, my a lot of my stuff's going to be ownership based today because I don't think that these run projections they're just it's weird to see teams with like the, the same or similar run projections and one team is getting twice as much ownership as the other and I just don't think people are playing any of Seattle so I, I'm very interested in Seattle at low ownership. I think that um, I have Seattle as as a team that's within that that mix of of, of number twos or whatever it is and I think that if you play um, what you call it uh, X amount of lineups I think you should get 15 percent of Oakland. Um, for for all the reasons that I mentioned before, exactly. You know, um, you, know you want to get leverage against the top owned pitcher when when it when it when it makes sense, and getting leverage against Robbie Ray always makes sense. Right. Um, so so I would uh, I would definitely uh, do some of that. I wouldn't like you said I wouldn't I wouldn't go five man stacks in Oakland in my in the five fifty five in the, my one lineup right but, right. but but if I'm playing 30, 30 lineup, they're, they're we're gonna have Oakland stacks in at least five of them. You know, so that's just the, that's just the way it's going to be. Exactly. And I think that I think that it, in order to get different, you don't need to necessarily play the full stack because I don't know if I'd want to oh. do that. Although Robbie yeah. Ray is the kind of pitcher you want to go full stack against because if it goes wrong, like we know it can go way wrong. But a pretty decent bullpen in Seattle. Um, the, my favorite bats from from Oakland would be Pinder, Brown, Murphy and Langoliers. It's interesting because they're both Murphy and Langoliers crossover positions. It's not nothing to worry about because of ownership on this slate, but I do like uh, Langoliers at, at 2,700 is my favorite catching option, which is interesting because Robbie Ray is the top pitching option. So all that said, is it, is it all going to be the Dodgers today? Are they going to really, everybody going to just go crazy with the Dodgers? Like, no, you know? be, no, because people are, some people are going to play um, San Francisco. You think some so? people are going to play the Yankees. Um uh, but uh, in general, yeah, I, I do think that most people are going to play the Dodgers. The only thing that might save their ownership is, again, maybe that they release their their lineups a little bit late. Um, yep. That's possible. And also, it's possible, and we've been sort of speculating this, but it just hasn't come to pass, that they that they rest some dudes, you know, and, and they they whatever. I, so well, it came to pass, in all fairness, and they played a doubleheader yesterday. In the first game, they, they basically, I mean, Joey Gallo was batting cleanup, and he barely can make the lineup most of the days. You know what I mean? Right. right. They, they, did, um, they did actually rest guys. So, I mean, look, if, if you want to try to, I mean, look, you want, you want, you want, it, you want to play Mookie, right, if you can right. get to him. Right. You want to play, um, you want to play Trey Turner. Um, and... I mean, you can hope that 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 because it's lefty lefty, Freddie Freeman's going to be lower owned, but that's not going to happen. Um, the only thing that could keep them low owned, if you want to know the truth, is the fact that Robbie Ray is you know is going to project really well. You know, but he's just um, not expensive enough. Right? Who's going to be the SP two that takes the ownership? This is the problem. You know, you're going to get like these Ray Dunning combinations or whatever, and people are going to play all these, be able to play whatever Dodgers they want, pretty much. Um, 
so, so I do think they're all going to be owned. Um, so you have to, I have to ask Bobby, like, how, how do, how do we sneak around that? You know, but we have to wait for lineups. Obviously, obviously you want to play bottom in the order stuff. You want to play Cody Bellinger, lefty, lefty hitting ninth. I mean, you know what I mean? These are the guys that I think you have to, yep. I think these are the things you probably have to do um, to, to play, uh, you know, that much of the Dodgers. But before we, we forget about it, I, I want to ask your opinion. Is this, is this basically the Dodgers aren't like throwing their, their starters out at all or, or, is, or, is, or is Dustin May in play? So this is the thing. This is the really good question. It's very strange what they did his last start, right? Like it almost feels like if you have a no hitter going, you're more likely to get yanked from a game early than, than if you don't, it's really right. strange to, to be pulled after 69 pitches and with a no hitter going against San Francisco last time out was really bizarre considering he'd thrown 86, 87, 82. You think they're working him back into the role to where if they need him in the playoffs, which they may not um, to throw 90 plus pitches that he could. But it seems like they're almost setting him up for that middle relief position. He is completely in play here because of the ownership. I have him on my list. Um, there's a lot of guys on my list for what it's worth today because I don't think that the pitching outside of Robbie Ray, um, he's the guy I'm the most afraid of, of skipping. But uh, at the same time, I, I you know his variance. So I, I think Dustin May is, is completely a legitimate play at less than 10% ownership. And he can do it in, in low, a low number of pitches. He can do it. Um, he, he can potentially also get back to that 80 plus pitch range because they played a doubleheader yesterday. They want to sort of save some arms. Why, why not? Maybe this time he gets a few more pitches than he did last time out. And in real, re, real life, my, my hot take on this slate is if I had to have one of these pitchers on this slate, any, any pitcher on the slate for the next five years, it would be Dustin May. He's the best pitcher on the slate going forward. Maybe you could argue for Logan Webb. Maybe you could argue for, I guess Snell, Ray, and McKinsey, but I, I actually think Dustin May is the best pitcher on this slate. I just don't think that we're getting the full Dustin May experience if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I, th I think I think of all the narratives that you, you described um, in in that uh, Dustin May stuff, I think the one that kind of rings the truest for me, and this I didn't even think about this. And this is actually really ridiculously sharp. Is you know Dodgers are planning to win the World Series, and and, and to do that as you just mentioned, they're going to be grooming him for that middle relief. Mode. Right. So, so, so I think that, that they're, they're trying to get his, his arm and pitch count and the, you know, heavy analytic crap, you know, just geared into this like 50 pitch range. You know what I mean? Like, right. like uh, it looks, they need it for a bullpen game, you know, whatever it is. And, and so I think there's lit, I don't think that there's a world where he pitches 80 pitches if you want to know the truth. So, so uh, I, I think it's possible he throws 80 pitches for what it's worth. Even that, even after saying what I said, I, I do yeah. think it's possible. I think it's a certain, especially after the doubleheader day. Um, yeah, but 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 again, like, is that is that worth taking a gamble on? It's not like that. He's got a good strikeout rate in general. He doesn't give up much. He's a really really good real life pitcher. Um, but I don't know. It's not like he's going to go out there and it's hard for him to go out there in five innings and strike out nine guys. It's a lot to ask for when you've got other guys who have a leash on the slate who are similarly priced or even cheaper. Um, so with with all that said, my, my favorites today are going to be the Yankees, Texas, Seattle, and the Dodgers. I I will probably use the Dodgers as like little minis because they're going to be so popular. Or I would play, like you said, the bottom of the lineup. And I think you're going to have some opportunities to do so. Um, uh, you, you could have Vargas at minimum cost batting ninth uh, against the lefty. You might see Chris Taylor. You, you don't know what the lineup's going to be, but the, the later it comes out and the weirder it is, maybe we can take advantage. And, and if I do stack the Dodgers, I promise you there'll be at least two hitters from the seven, eight, nine range in my lineups, because that's the only way you can try and get a little bit different with their stack and they're going to be very popular. But I, I like the idea of going with New York, Texas, Seattle, getting some Baltimore minis, some Detroit minis and some Oakland minis in large field stuff. As, as we used to say, when I, when, when I would think of like three betting all in with zero, I would say someone take my mouse away. So <laughs> So I think I think this this Manning Lynch thing is is going to be a candidate for that uh, mm -hmm. for that uh, construct, you know. Just uh, someone take my mouse away before I do something like this because I, cause I, I really want to because I really want to do it. <laughs> I think it's extremely reasonable on this. I think this is the kind of slate you want to do it on because you're just fading those top other guys. Now the flip side is I can also play an unowned Lance Lynn or Tristan yeah. McKenzie, and I don't think that their range of outcomes is all that different than Robbie Ray's. Uh, maybe it's a little less likely, but I don't think it's that much. So I, I, I that's what I'm going to do is I'm my, my priority. I've got six guys on my priority list and they're Lyles, Manning, Lynn, McKenzie, Lynch, and Robbie Ray. Um, 
and I'm considering Contreras, Webb, and Marquis too, because I don't think I just think you're going to see the, the the projection for pitching is going to be a re- a really weird thing this time of year. And sometimes it works both ways, you know. Like sometimes if you're in the playoff hunt, your your pitcher is going to be capped a little bit so, to some extent. Sometimes if you have nothing to play for, your pitcher is going to be capped a little bit. And it's really hard to know which which side will go with what. Um, I would just say the more I look at this, Tristan McKenzie, a low ownership, that might be the thing to do. Um, that really might be. And also, I like your idea of double spending down. I'm totally good with the Manning Lynch combination, and uh, that's probably something I'll. And, and and the thing I think about when I'm considering double paying down is what is that getting me right? So 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 as the only thing that's standing in my way is that the only thing that that gets me is our players that are really chalky, right? It gets me up to those Dodgers, um, but they're not going to be chalky in that in that line of construction. You know exactly. what I mean? Like you know. Uh, the other, the, you know what else it gets me? And this is kind of a little sneaky, sort of, is that if Dunning, in fact, is going to be a kind of owner, I mean, it gets it gets me Trout and Otani if I want to do that. Right. Um, so, uh, and it certainly gets me, I could, I could just, I could, I could root for the Roger Maris. I could play judge pretty easily. You know what I mean? Right. If I do that. So, so it does, it does get me some stuff. Um, uh, and that's, that's what I'm thinking about is, is, is paying down for those guys enough. I mean, not enough. Is 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 the hitting upgrade enough for me to justify paying down for those pitchers? And it's definitely definitely a sexy way to, to, to approach it this. Is. Um, so uh, there's that we got that going for us. Yep. Um, but but I'll tell you the 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 really really sharp approach. If you, and Bobby always has the sharpest approach. I don't know if it's going to be going to win or not. But to do that to do what he's suggesting, like some kind of Mackenzie Snell or or I forget the other guy, Lynn, whatever it is. Yeah. Like like three like other guys except for Ray in that price range. Yeah, and and then still going for the value plays, sort of. Um, I don't think very. I don't like to say nobody, but I think very few, a very few percentage of of players that we're worried about are going to play those types of lineups. So you're going to be yeah. competing against not that many people in that if that happens. Hundred percent. I I totally yeah. That's 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 where I'm at too. And I think this is you know again it's this time of baseball season where you're going to have to get wild to 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 try yeah. and to try and do some damage because you're getting really concentrated chalk in spots that maybe aren't quite as good as they're getting credit for. And no, no better example than Castillo last night when you see the ownership on him. Um, while I had him in my biggest buy-in, he was, I had him in basically no other tournaments. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was, that's what you want to do. And that's sort of way I'll treat Robbie Ray today. Um, all right. So that's, that's, that's it for that. We're going to do a football yeah. show coming up next. Uh, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, sounds good. Let's get to the NFL. Let's do it.